That's delicious. Like, this is seriously the best I've had. Now, I've had a lot of crispy pie. This is good job, guys. Hey, go, girl. There are a couple of dishes that you would never make at home simply because it just takes too long or it makes a mess or it's just really scary. And crispy pata is one of those dishes. It's always terrifying to take something, boil it, dry it, deep fry it, especially if you have a small kitchen. Now, I've never made crispy pata at home, so I really wanted to try and make it. But before I do that, I think it's important that we visit someone who has mastered the art and become a specialist. So we can then take their tips and apply them in a home kitchen setting. By the way, we have to go all the way to Valenzuela for this. So I've never been to Valenzuela before. It's kind of lost. Um, but I think we finally found it right here. KK Crispy Pata House. They only do it for delivery and order. They deliver all over um, Metro Manila. So let's check it out. So I'm here with Pal over here in Valenzuela. We saw one of your, I think it was a video where yeah, this ridiculous thing where it was like a plastic spoon. You're kind of like going through a piece of pork um, and it looked absolutely amazing. Yes. And we read the reviews and I was like, you know what? I actually don't know where to get good crispy bata. So I thought it'd be really cool to come visit you here. Um, so can you explain to me what kind of makes your crispy bata special? So I think you have to have your, uh, yung, yung passion in oh. cooking. Yeah. So, so you focus on one thing, wag yung iba iba. We also do the traditional traditional way of cooking. Clean it, tapos i burn namin yung mga excess hairs, mm -hmm. babalot namin sa kacha. Okay, so what's the kacha for? That, that I find super interesting. Kasi once you boil it ng super tagal, uh, may risk para masira siya eh. Mapepreserve niya pa rin yung mismong pwesto, I mean yung oh. hindi siya mapuputol. And Kasi nga, sobrang lambot. You're boiling it for how long? For around four to five hours. After five hours, what do you guys do? Hanguin na siya, dalin na siya sa gripo, wash ng konte para mawala yung sebo sebo. Okay. Yeah. Kasi yung sebo ni iwan siya sa uh. ulo. Eh. You open it, then dry it using the uh, crop paper. And how long do you let it to kind of dry? Like one hour. So, because we're we're gonna make crispy pata in a home kitchen, which is very different. Because uh. very risky. You always have the the risk. Of Mm, Such mm, small yeah, pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why, I mean, one of the reasons why you can go straight from Ooh, boiling yo. to one hour drying straight to deep frying is again. because you have the space. Yes. Yeah. And how long have you been making the same recipe? How many years? It's almost, I don't know, 11 to 12 years. Wow. Okay. Awesome. I'm excited to try it. True test of a crispy pata. This skin looks. Absolutely insane. Come closer, take a look. So soft. I'm literally scooping it out. Dip that in the sauce. That's delicious. Like, I mean, I was expecting it to be good, but that's that's next level. So. I've never been a fan of, of uh, crispy patas that are extremely bubbly. You know, you have some that have a lot of air on the skin. I prefer kind of like very, very small bubbles. But what they've really achieved here is really just the softness of the meat. You have a lot of crispy patas that tend to dry out. Uh, so you have crispy skin, yeah, great. Everyone loves crispy skin because it tastes really good. But at the end of the day, there's more meat than there is skin. So the meat being tender is for me personally more important. So you really get that contrast of perfect skin and then juicy meat, just like you have here. Mm. I really don't think that we can achieve this level of perfection at home. You can do something similar, but at the end of the day, this kind of setup really sets the bar for the quality that you can expect. But I'm really excited about this. I think pig face is kind of like one of those things, I mean, people love seasick and everything, right? Where they use mascara. It's one of those things that's absolutely striking. 
it uses the whole animal, which is really important. And really you get kind of like the, the most collagen, the most fat, the most juiciness in the cheeks, around the eyes, and you get kind of like the crispiness of the, of the ears as well. So let's try this, Mon. That is intense. That's seriously the best I've had. Yeah, I've had a lot of crispy pie. This is good job, guys. You know what they say when you focus on one thing and one thing only, you become really good at it. And that's exactly what's here, what, what's in front of us. It's kind of probably a, a recipe that's been passed down and perfected along the years. And just a perfect bite of food. First thing we want to do is season that water. Lots of garlic, red onions. We have some vinegar and some whole peppercorns. A couple of bay leaves. And this is just kind of like that first step to tenderize the pork. We're using the front legs because they say the back legs are a bit more gamey and would need to be boiled a few times. So here, just once, we're gonna put the pork in. Don't worry if it's not submerged because that leg will eventually curl up. Close it, say bye bye for an hour. When making a char at home, this is a little gadget that we bought in Shopee or Lazada. And it's been amazing because it cuts these at that perfect thickness that you want your julienne to be without being annoying and having to see. Julienne. So we're gonna do this for the carrots and for our papaya. Uh, we're gonna bring our water to a simmer, and into that we're gonna be adding some rice wine vinegar, some white vinegar, just a tad bit, black pepper, bay leaves, and some sugar. So unlike other pickles or pickle-like things in the world, achara is way sweeter than it is sour. But I'm not a fan of achara when it's like extremely licorice-y like with raisins and stuff like that. It's a huge debate on whether or not achara should have raisins. I'm team hashtag no raisins. Um, and I hate it when it's too syrupy. So I like to control the amount of sugar that I put when I'm making achara. So that's gonna boil, thicken up just slightly, and then we're gonna add that to our carrot um, and papaya mix once it's cooled down a little bit, and then jar it up. Um, you can eat this right away, because it is already quite intense, but I like to leave it in the fridge for a couple of days first to really just funkify it a little bit. Okay, after 90 minutes, transfer it to our cooling rack. Now, now that it's hot, that natural steam will actually just dry out the skin a little bit. Once this cools down completely, you'll see the skin will start getting a little bit dry. After that, you're gonna put it in the fridge overnight until it gets nice and dry. And then after that, we'll put it in the oven for a further one hour at the lowest temp to try to dry it out as much as possible. So this is what it looks like after one hour in the oven at a very low temp, flipping halfway to try to get as dry of a skin as possible, which should lend to a really crispy result when deep fried. Cover it. Cover it. Obviously, when you're deep frying at home, you want to be very careful. We're hearing a little bit of pops here and there, which means there's still a little bit of water left in the pork, and so we want to make sure that it's not exploding. So just try to be as safe as possible. Martin says we've got this under control. The bubbles sound like they're getting smaller and smaller, so it sounds a bit better. Next, little dipping sauce, red chili. If you have local seeding la bouillo, the tiny one, please use that. It's very hard to find. Onions, vinegar, two is to one the soy sauce. And a bit of sugar. You want that to be briny, kind of aggressive on the vinegar, because that's what you're gonna need. 
to really cut through all that pork fat and richness. Crispy pata. That looks absolutely beautiful. I have some butterhead lettuce. I'm gonna to explain to you why. Soy sauce and vinegar dip and our beautiful achata. Now that's the sound you want to hear when you have fried pork. Break into that. You want it still juicy, still warm inside. Look at that, how beautiful that is. Really nice and crunchy. We'll stick it up a notch. I love these baby kind of like butterhead lettuces. They're so tasty. So we're gonna serve that with the pork, with our achara, so that brightness I was talking about a while ago, into our soy dip. Mm, very Filipino flavor, just in terms of how you serve it. It uses a format that's really popular in Korea, all right? If you're Filipino living in the US, or if you have foreign friends coming to the Philippines, I think these are the types of dishes that we should be presenting. Showcases a lot of versatility, showcases a lot of different parts of our culture in terms of salsawa and condiments, deep fried pork, usage of pork. Great initiation in Philippine food. This is a raw, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Martin and I had an extra piece of pata, so we decided to leave it during the weekend? Yes, two days. Two days in the fridge to really, really dry up the skin to see if we can crisp this up even further. Not that you have to. I feel like what we did was quite nice. And if you look at crispy pata made in different restaurants, it's just crispy. It doesn't have to be like- Bubbly and stuff. Bubbly, right? No hate for people that makes their bubblies, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't have to be like that crazy popped chicharron skin. For crispy pata so but we're gonna try this um and if it's good then we'll recommend this as the way to go Ooh, you should touch it why lip <laughs> can i touch your skin it's the same see yeah may the gods of evil You gotta protect the, <laughs> the asset. Already a massive difference from what, oh, I'm speaking too soon. But when I did this, they're massive. You could hear massive bubbles. This feels like it's dehydrated yes. a bit more. Whoa, did you hear that? Yes. Dude, it's alive. <laughs> it's had time to chill. We're gonna go again. <laughs> no, we... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Martin's holding the camera, which means apologies Chaos. in advance. So we have our second crispy pata. So not a huge difference in terms of the skin texture, but it is much drier and then nice little bubbles. We're not gonna use a plastic spoon, but let's use a, a metal spoon. Good, but not enough of a difference for me for that three extra days in the fridge. The previous one, which was kind of like a very simple, easy way of making a really tasty home crispy pata, is good enough for me.